Hi everyone! I hope you're doing great. So, I'm not sure I made it clear in the last video, but I wasn't really the genius kind of child that started coding at the age of 9 on the family computer. I started playing video games very early, but I never considered creating them, and even less as a full-time job. I did create a few board games when I was a child, inspired by my passion for Age of Empires. Three. Hit the like button if you grew up with Age of Empires 3 too. Hit the like button if you think it's the best Age of Empires. Starting a war in the comments on my second video. And more recently, last year I created a few board games, but they were left at the stage of prototypes, I never finished them. I was hoping to publish them, but I never got past the testing phase, which is a very long and repetitive phase. And even if you get past that phase, the outcome is still insecure since you then fully depend on a publisher. And I'm not mentioning the crowdfunding path, which can be very long and difficult too. Anyways, these past few years I have had multiple professional experiences in data analysis, but I never woke up thinking, okay, this is what I'm meant to do. I also realized I need total freedom in my schedule organization and these experiences annihilated it. For example, during my year in the French public administration, I had a badge I used to record my arrival and departure times. And a few months ago, I started a tutorial on creating games. And right after I finished my first Unity tutorial, I was already considering making this my full-time job. So I started preparing for this very moment where I'm 100% dedicated to learning. For anyone interested, those are my first steps in game development. 1. Watching tutorials. If you've never opened Unity before, I highly recommend GMTK's tutorial. It's a very qualitative tutorial with great visuals that make it a smooth introduction on how Unity works. 2. I implemented very simple gameplay features. I built on GMTK's tutorial, adding a random event system designed to make the player struggle. I then created tiny projects from scratch, like this top-down tank game. I was super proud of how the tank needed to face the direction of its movement to actually start moving. At your beginnings, every task, as small as it may seem, can be a real challenge. And as I stepped in these very simple prototypes, I soon got frustrated by my limited knowledge of Unity and C Sharp, which led me to the next step. 3. I jumped straight into CodeMonkey's free tutorial. This is a 10-hour course. 10 hour course with multiple lectures there is a point in this course around three or four hours where things started stepping up drastically and i kind of got overwhelmed and inside we pass in the select counter and we set it to this select counter and let's say we are also implementing the i kitchen object parent interface basically what this means is that different objects can implement the exact same interface whilst having different implementations so we just go into the scriptml object spawn Another the prefab array, and set the parents so let's do exactly that and we assign so the, the primary so we assign the primary so and basically say about this function this implementation is based and over here it's going to be very simple but I held on, and as the course advanced, everything started becoming more clear. I really learned a ton on this course, especially on C-sharp features. I'm still impressed on how much content there is on YouTube to learn Unity. Most of them are tutorials, which will go over a specific Unity or C-sharp feature. But courses allow you to go through the whole process of creating a game and connecting all these systems together. This is a free course, which is very unusual, so I highly recommend aspiring developers to go through it or creating a full gameplay loop for a simple game. I wanted to build a small fighting game but with a twist. The objective of this game was to capture a flag and bring it back to your base. You could also fight with the enemy player but there is a time loop that resets every 20 seconds for example which leads to very interesting strategic choices the player must make between capturing the flag and bringing it back to the base, killing the enemy player before he brings the flag back or collecting mana to gain stronger abilities for the next loop. Approaching the end of the round, which was composed of five loops, inevitably led to glorious chaos. Sadly, I couldn't find a way to make the system record a player's actions and replay them perfectly. There would often be tiny delays in the actions and that would just break the game. I did risk my mental health trying to understand what was wrong. I think I spent a accumulated time of three days debugging this and since the game literally depends on the system, I had to drop it even before I added local multiplayer. I would love to finish this game in the future. So if you're an experienced developer watching this video and you have an idea on how I could solve this problem, feel free to drop your idea in the comments below. I'll be glad to discuss this with you. And finally, five. Following yet another course 
from CodeMonkey. I wanted to anchor the knowledge I had learned in his first course without recreating the game in the first course. As I planned, this course covered much of what I learned in the first one, but it was nice to remobilize this knowledge in another game. It also introduced me to a custom grid system, which to be honest, I'm not 100% confident about. And it taught me the basics of the ASTAR pathfinding algorithm, which is a really big chunk of content. Six, which is not really the sixth step, it's a step that covers the whole other steps. Collecting advice from experienced developers on the best way to actually learn game development. During these steps, I watched a lot of videos to optimize my learning curve and I tried to follow their advice as best as I could. I had to fight my urge to build ambitious games and also my reflex to look a tutorial on YouTube to overcome any task I encountered. This is an ongoing challenge and I sometimes look up for solutions on the internet, but I do try my best to implement it myself first. This is to avoid getting stuck in what is known as the tutorial hell, where you cannot build any system without watching a tutorial before. I feel like I'm slowly making my way out of this phase. So as you might have noticed, I still haven't gone through the whole process of creating a game from start to finish. Hey, this is Julian from the editing. I just realized we're arriving at a breaking point in this video. Until now, I've been talking about what I've been doing in the past, and the second half of what was planned to be this video is about what I'm planning to do next. So I thought I'd make it more clear if I'd split this video in two. And I guess this is how this video ends then. That's such a bad way to end a video. So yeah, um, if you enjoyed this video, remember to press the like button. I really hate doing this. <laughs> If you enjoyed this video, remember to press the like button. And if you don't want to miss anything in this adventure, subscribe to this channel. That is still a great support to me. In the next video, I'll be covering my next challenge in my game dev journey. Thank you so much for watching. And of course, don't forget to press play.